friends, family, and internet strangers. Stephanie here with a new What's for Dinner video. This week it's pretty simple. I had a lot of leftovers, so I only have a few meals to share with you, but I do have a few meals to share with you. Let's get into it. First up, the meal that lasted me a week. That would be my meatloaf. So I used the ground beef and pork blend. This is a two pound package that they sell for $6.99 at my Kroger. It's listed as ground bork. So I always just love the way they label it, ground bork. So I made this the same way. I have always had meatloaf in my family. It is a one to one to one to one ratio of meat to breadcrumbs to liquid to egg. So for this two pound package, I did two cups of breadcrumbs and then two cups of liquid. And we always do half barbecue sauce, half water. So in this case, I did one cup of barbecue sauce. My preferred barbecue sauce is any type of honey barbecue. I love a good honey barbecue sauce. And then I did one cup of water as the other cup of the two cups liquid. And then two eggs, one for each pound. So once I've got all of this in my bowl, I am going to mix it up. You want to mix it well, but not necessarily over mix it. So when I was growing up, for pretty much anything that involved mixing by hand, my father would always say that the secret ingredient was the dirt under his fingernails. But I do not like touching meat with my bare hands. I feel like I have to scrub my hands over and over and over when I'm done handling raw meat. So I do use gloves. My gloves were starting to come off my hands a little bit. So I did have to kind of reposition them a few times to try and finagle my meatloaf without getting the dirt from underneath my fingernails in this, even though I was the only one that was going to be eating it. So it really didn't matter that much and my hands aren't that dirty, but I always think of my dad anytime I mix anything with ground beef. I always think, oh, the dirt under the fingernails. So as I mix this, let me tell you how how many meals I got out of this meatloaf. Out of this two pounds of ground bork meatloaf mixture, I had seven meals of this within a week. I had it for this dinner. I had it for the dinner that you'll see right after this one where I repurposed the leftovers. And I had this for lunch all five days of the week. The only thing that differed in my lunches is what sides I had with it because I did not get seven meals out of my mashed potatoes. I only got a couple meals out of the mashed potatoes. But once this is all mixed together but not over mixed, I am just going to put this into my baking dish. I was planning on doing this kind of the way that I saw Mama Mel do it on In the Kitchen with Mama Mel, which was spreading it flat, but the only pans I had that were big enough for that to actually make a difference and not be a giant loaf and be more of a flat, crispier type of meatloaf, I would have had to turn on my actual oven. I don't like to turn on my actual oven if I don't have to. So I did go for a thicker one in my air fry oven. I started out with foil on top. Halfway through, I took the foil off. I also added more barbecue sauce to the top, which I thought I recorded, but realized afterwards I didn't. So here I am recreating it for you. I then also brushed it across the top and put it back in the oven to finish cooking until it was done. Then for my mashed potatoes, I finally found those Orida steam and mashed potatoes and I was so excited. So I popped those in the microwave and when they came out, I put them in a bowl. I added my butter. I added some milk that I had warmed up a little bit in the microwave so that it wouldn't shock my potatoes going in cold. And then I seasoned it with salt and some pepper and a little bit of onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and a dash of cayenne. That is usually how I season my mashed potatoes. Then I grabbed a potato masher and went to town on these. I love mashed potatoes. They're one of my all-time favorite foods. One of my favorite things to do is eat them for breakfast. Leftover mashed potatoes for breakfast are one of the best things to have for breakfast, but in this case, 
this all went with my meatloaf uh, for the first several days while I still had some left and then I switched to just random sides with my meatloaf for lunch. So once this is all mashed up, I timed it out so that it would uh, be mashed up right after my meatloaf came out of the oven. So I did let my meatloaf rest after I took it out. So for the meatloaf, you wanna make sure, especially if you're using the ground bork mixture where it's got the pork in there in addition to the ground beef, you wanna make sure it's fully cooked. That's going to vary based on the size of your meatloaf that is also going to vary based on the um, not only the thickness of the meatloaf but based on your oven so I don't have an exact time for you mine took about an hour to cook in my air fry oven which I did just use the bake function I didn't necessarily air fry it uh, but once it was done look at how gorgeous this meatloaf turned out that barbecue sauce kind of caramelizes around the edges oh it's so good and then I served this with broccoli as well so that is the finished product the next day I decided to change up my meatloaf leftovers and I made a meatloaf quesadilla because at this point I will put anything into a quesadilla I'm pretty sure it's one of my go-to's for easy leftovers when I want them to be a little bit different and at my work one of the lunch specials that happens from time to time is a meatloaf sandwich and I thought if you can make meatloaf into a sandwich why can't you make meatloaf into a quesadilla so I had these carb balanced tortillas on hand already i had colby jack cheese already shredded up in the refrigerator and normally when i see meatloaf sandwich it has an onion ring on top or some sort of crispy onions and i had crispy onions on hand as well so i started out by warming up my tortilla on both sides once i flipped it over i added my cheese i put my meatloaf leftovers in the microwave and then i just kind of smushed them down so they were more of a ground beef type consistency and then on top of that i added a little bit more of the barbecue sauce so that it would have a good sauce on there and then added my crispy onions and then once I had uh, my crispy onions on there I folded it over and let it cook fully until the cheese melted since none of the ingredients really needed to cook I just needed to wait for that cheese to get nice and melty and for both sides of the outside to get nice and browned to my liking you could do this longer if you like it to have a really really brown uh, look on it but this one turned out perfect for me I served this with just some leftover bell peppers that I had cut up and needed to finish and that was a very very easy dinner and then after like five straight meals of meatloaf I was ready for a change and to not have ground beef or beef of any kind or really any meat so I got Taco Bell my favorite thing at Taco Bell are the bean burritos so I got bean burritos and nacho fries this next night and then once I was ready for meat again but still all those meatloaf leftovers were happening for lunches I had a pork chop with some teriyaki sauce on it and the last of my Costco asparagus this asparagus lasted a while it stayed good for like a good two to three weeks and I was able to finish all of it I seasoned it with olive oil and some of my corruption seasoning I can link that down below it's never sponsored I just love that seasoning so that's the large container that my mother had ordered online for me for Christmas after she knew I'd probably be getting low from the one that I picked up on my road trip since that road trip was now two years ago at this point that I picked up that Uncle Lou's corruption seasoning. I spread that out on a sheet pan and then get to work on my pork chop. So for my pork chop, I did not marinate this in advance in any teriyaki sauce. I hadn't even decided what exactly I was going to use to season my pork chop, but I decided last minute teriyaki sounded like it would be delicious. And I've been working my way through this bottle of teriyaki sauce. I've used it on chicken in the past few videos that I've had. So I thought 
it would be good on pork as well. And I was right, it was. So I'm simply seasoning my pork chop with salt and pepper to start. And then I'm going to saute this to get the outsides nice and brown before I put it in the oven. So salt and pepper going down on both sides. And then I heated up some extra virgin olive oil in my pan and just got a nice little sear, a nice little brown on each of the sides of my pork chop. And then once it was brown to seal in that flavor, I put it on my sheet pan with my asparagus. I took the teriyaki sauce. I have the Sweet Baby Ray's sweet teriyaki sauce and I put it over the top and used one of those little brush things, one of the silicone brushes to brush that all over the outside, forming a nice little glaze for my pork chop instead of a marinade on it. And it worked out so well. I was concerned that it might get a little bit too brown using the air roast function on my air fryer with that teriyaki glaze, but it did not. It turned out perfectly. And it always amazes me just how much I love a perfectly cooked pork chop. It's so simple, but so delicious when you get the temperature inside just right and you let it rest just right. The cooking time is going to vary for pork depending on the thickness in your oven, but in my air roast function on my air fryer, I believe this took at 375 degrees about 20 minutes, and then I checked it with a meat thermometer and it was perfect. What wasn't perfect were these carrot coins. I picked these up at Trader Joe's a while back and had not tried them yet, and honestly, I was not a big fan of them. I just didn't really like the seasoning that was on them, but otherwise this meal was perfect. The pork chop was so good and so was the asparagus. Thanks so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And if you did, I hope you give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. And I've got a new road trip video coming out this Friday. Don't want to miss that.